eyes of your kids um, when you make mistakes because they are very quick to point out, hey dad, you messed up. And at first you're like, no, no, I didn't. Yeah, I really, I really, I really did mess up a lot. And I still mess up a lot. Uh, we mess up a lot. We mess up from day to day and time to time and, and we, we mess up. And I think it's one of the uh, the jobs of a parent is to try to pick you up during those times and maybe give you instruction, you know, how to, let's maybe try to do it, maybe let's try to do it this way. And so what's neat about this is, is that growing up, you have like different ideas. And I remember working with my dad and stuff, and uh, I always loved playing with a tape measure. And uh, me and John, we would always have a game, we'd get two tape measures, and we'd see how far we could go without it breaking. Eight and a half feet, as far as far I got. Uh, we used to do this, and I remember Dad saying, guys, it's not a toy. It's a tool. You measure with it. You don't... Yeah, Dad, we are measuring. We're measuring to who's its father. No, that's not what we mean. And see, tools are like this. Like, they're, they're great, and uh, the right tool for the right job is perfect. Now... You can use a bucket for a lot of things, for carrying things, carrying rocks, carrying water. It's great. Now, once you get a hole in it, it's not much good for carrying liquid, but it'll still hold rocks. But anyway, it's, a, it's the right tool for the right job. And I like tools. I don't like tools that I set up on top of a shelf, but I like tools that, you know, that I can use and I couldn't bring everything I want. I want to bring a chop saw, but I thought that might not be the best thing. But anyway, this is a, a great tool. And I remember my dad teaching me how to use, you know, the, the skill saw. And uh, what was so uh, neat about this is, and he's like, listen, always keep your cord out of the way. Keep it out of your way. And so I remember, I remember doing that. And uh, dad teaching me how, how to do that, but it's the right tool with the right job. And so if I needed to cut something, you know, long, then I would... I would use this, get me a straight edge, get me a line, and it's even got a little laser pointer on it that it'll, you can get right on the line. Again, the right tool for the right job. And so that's great for, that's great for cutting. And I've got, I've got several others here, but uh, anyway, just the right tool for the right job. And I don't want to get my socket set out here just for a minute because this fast thing to me growing up because I know you're probably not going to be able to hear it, but anyway, it's a ratchet. And uh, what's so cool about this, I'm going to hold it up, is because it does this noise. You hear that? I thought that was the coolest thing ever. Because what we would do, we'd get Dad's sockets on it, and we would do this. Again, Dad, it's a tool. You, you, it's not a toy. It's a tool. We, we take things off and tie them up. It's a tool. It, it's a tool. And that's what... So, anyway, I like tools because you can use tools to fix things. I, 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 like, I like tools. You can use them to fix things. And see, this Sermon on the Mount, what Jesus is doing, is that he's laying out all these different tools for us and that we can use them in the right manner. Now, it's great to be able to have these tools and have them, have them up somewhere, but if you just have your tools and put up onto a shelf, they're really not doing you any good. But I wonder how much of us are all that way with God's Word. That like we have God's Word, we have it, but instead, instead of actually using the knowledge, using this Scripture into our daily life, using these things, instead it gets to sit there. Now the reason why this one looks so new is because it's a week old. So it's not been there yet. But this one has got stains, and this is, a, this is my sander. So if I need to sand something, I grab this. You know, I'm not going to grab a socket or my bucket. You know, I'm going to grab the right tool for the right job. And having the right tool for the right job is so important. So yesterday I was on, uh, we recently got a different tractor, a little bit bigger than our other one. And it's a Massey Ferguson. Uh, in case you don't know, that's red tractor. It's the way to go. So anyway, I was on the, was on the Massey Ferguson yesterday and I was plowing the field and I remember the previous year I was using the little tractor to plow in the field. And we were raising pumpkins so my kids could 
raised pumpkins as a family. And so we did this. And I remember, Dad, uh, we were getting ready. We are close to the end of the season. Dad said, listen, you know that little tractor isn't made for what you're doing. Like, yeah, Dad, I, I know it's not. I'm really trying to hold out. He's like, okay, just as long as you know. He didn't tell me not to use it. It's a tractor. I still use it in the manner in which it was intended to be used. But it was too small to do what we was doing. And it really clicked with me yesterday because yesterday I got to plow with this other tractor that we got. And here I was going, a road, going down the rows. And I was like, man, this is so much easier than fighting with the little tractor. And, I was like, and it got back to me thinking with all this that the right tool for the right job is so awesome. In church, we have tools as Christians. We, we have tools tools and I know that some of you here you don't care anything about DeWalt power tools or hammer drills or you skill saw you you know you contract somebody else to do it but I guarantee you've got tools that you use every single day we got some sort of tool to help us if you haven't turned it on today you're probably at some point today you're going to use your remote control it's a tool for your tv you're going to use your remote we have some sort of tools ladies use tools every morning you use tools to help you apply to put your face on. And, but you, I think they call them like applicators and stuff. It's a tool. It's, all, it's a tool. And you all even have the woman's lows. Hobby Lobby? It's the woman's lows. They've got tons of stuff in there for you to build things and stuff. It's the woman's lows. And my kids have asked me this. Said, we can go to Lowe's and spend hours. You just get lost in a sea of stuff that you can make and it's enough time on tools my whole point is is that we have all this stuff at our disposal but how much more stuff do we have with God's word that we have at our disposal so the whole thing what Jesus is teaching on he keeps raising the bar up and what we learned last week is that we had this bar set up here and Jesus said hey you've heard it this way but I say this and he kept raising the bar up and what he was trying to do was to get them to have a better understanding because they had a heart problem. They had a heart problem about love and all these wrong ideas and misconceptions about how they were to live their life. And what Jesus is doing is the same thing that my dad did. And I remember one time having a screwdriver trying to hammer a nail. And he said, son, you need a hammer. I know I do, dad. But it's down there in the garage and I'm right here and this screwdriver's Let's just take a minute and go get the right tool for the right job. And this is what Jesus is doing. He's instructing them to have the right tool for the right job. And what it allows them to do is to be able to go deeper in their relationship with God. Deeper in their relationship with God. Now, if you like to build things, there's nothing like whenever you get to build something and you get to stand back and you go, Man. I did that. I, I built that. And ladies, you do the same thing. You you put your face on and you're like huh I look pretty good and I know you do this because you'll take a selfie and post on Instagram <laughs> you may not say it but you're showing everybody this is what we do and Jesus is taking the time on the Sermon on the Mount to tell people how to better understand God's word and apply it so they can live it and the tool that he uses today is just like this Matthew chapter 6. We're going through this about uh, the Sermon on the Mount, one of Jesus' most famous well-known sermons. And I think that when Jesus speaks, we ought to listen. Because not only was Jesus this God on earth, but he was the Word. John 1.1 1, 1 says that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus is the Word. Now, if you had an opportunity to hear Jesus preach, like, do you think that you would... And, and hear like Jesus was coming to the Thompson Bowling Arena to preach. I mean, I would want to go hear Jesus. Like I would want to, I'd want to go hear Jesus preach. I think that nobody could preach like Jesus. I mean, it's Jesus, you know. I mean, you no, know, he could preach. And I know that you all have heard a lot of messages throughout the years of your life. Well, just let's think of this past year. Let's say if you came to church fifty times, you missed a couple Sundays. So let's say you came to church fifty times. That means last year you heard fifty messages from God. 50 messages. Let's say like you've only been in church for maybe three years. Well, that's 150 that you heard. In 10 years, that is 500 messages from God that you've heard. What are we doing with it? 
And this is what Jesus dives in here. He's like, guys, you've got to understand this and, and get it in the right manner. So he begins to teach and to preach. And today he speaks on prayer. Prayer. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. I love this. He says, whenever you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites because they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by people. I assure you, they've got the reward. And I love this. So what he first directly does is he points out, he's like, don't do it like that. Well, and this is what made me think when I was studying this. Is I just remember my dad, me and my brother being so little and doing this. And Jesus said, no, no, don't do it like that. Instead, what you want to do is, you do it like this. This is what he's telling him. He's like, hey, you don't do it. Don't, don't pray like this. Don't pray like these hypocrites because they love standing in the synagogue. And what they're doing, they're showboating. They're showboating their prayer life with God. Showboating, using fancy words. And most of it was babblings and repetitiveness. He says, don't, don't do it like that because they do it to be seen. It's not about the intimacy. It's not about their prayer request. It's about them showboating to others. And I've heard other people pray. And there's some people, when they pray, and I've heard them pray, I'm like, oh, man. It sounds like they are just right with God, and they're just quoting Scripture, and it sounds so eloquent. And I don't know how they do it, but some of these words, they just, I don't know if they make them up or what, but they just come out, and it just sounds so profound. But Jesus doesn't say anything about the words that's being used. He doesn't say anything about how long or quoting Scripture. He says, listen, don't showboat. Don't showboat. Don't pray like them because they love standing in the synagogue and on the street corners. Look at me. And I imagine what they do is somehow as they're going into somehow praying mode. And I don't know what that is. But they're doing it audibly so they can be seen and they can be heard. Whatever that is. But he says, they got their reward. So Jesus is saying, listen, don't do it like that. Don't do it like that. Instead, verse 6. But when you pray, go into your private room. Shut your door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And pray your Father who seeks who sees in secret and will reward you. When you pray, don't babble like idolaters since they imagine they'll be heard for their many words. Don't be like them because your father knows the things you need before you ask. Just go in private. This is the whole reason why we say bow your head and close your eyes. You don't see that command in the Bible that, hey, you need to close your eyes and bow your head to pray. We do it to create a sense of privacy. Just you and God where you can try to block everything else out just have some private time, just you and God, just as private as we possibly can. So you can have a conversation with God. That's what we're saying. Do this in private. This is what it's needed. It's not so everybody else can see. It's not a showboat. It's not a display for everybody else. Instead, it's the opposite. Shut your door and pray to your Father who's in secret. See, let's have this intimate relationship. And he goes on. We don't chant. We don't babble. We don't use useless words. But instead, he says, don't be like them because your Father knows the things you need before you ask. Now, if, you, if you're not careful, you almost read that statement and think, oh, he already knows what I need, then why pray at all? Church, he knows what you need, but he wants to hear from you. It's an intimate relationship. It's the same thing that your spouse wants, communication. It's the same thing that your kids want. They want to have conversations with you. This is what he's talking about, this intimate relationship. Where you can talk with God and he'll talk with you. You can have this close, intimate fellowship with God. That's what he's saying. Hey, don't do it like this, but instead do it like this. Oh yeah, and don't be like them because your father knows what you need. You don't have to chant. You don't have to get angry with God. You don't have to raise your voice. He hears you. He knows what you need. And you can quote scripture to him, but I think he already knows the scripture. I mean, he wrote the book. Right? But instead, just talk to him. Just talk to him. Just talk to him. Be in private. Don't showboat. Just, just talk to him. Just talk to the Father. And that's what he's talking about here. Just, just talk to the Father. So what he does, he gives him a sample. A sample prayer. And we know this as the Lord's Prayer. And he says in verse 9, Therefore you should pray like this. Our Father in heaven, your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us a day our daily bread and forgive our de us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. That's from the Holman Christian Standard. I really like that, but I've heard this my whole life in King James, and here's what it says. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is not a prayer that you necessarily recite. But it, it's a model prayer. It, it's a sample prayer. And he kind of divides this up into three kind of categories you can kind of see this in. And he first starts it out, you know, our, our Father which art in heaven. And he starts out this, this praise. He's giving this honor, this glory, this recognition to God. So this is a part of humility of yourself and recognizing where God is and who God is and what God is. He is supreme. He's dominant. He is over all. And he's giving this praise to God. And so when we pray, there should be praise a part of it. We, we should praise God. We should thank God. This is a part of this praise. We should praise God and honor Him. And this is what Jesus is talking about. Now, and if Jesus is saying, hey, you need to pay this honor and this tribute to God, I think, I think we ought to listen. I think that we ought to listen. And I want to stop right here for a minute and just ask you how your prayer life is. Right here, right in the middle of this, what does your prayer life look like? And I know that we pray. We all, we all pray. But how does it look? Is it a mess? Do you only tell him what you need? Do, do you ever just thank him for being who he is? This, this is so important. Without, without this communication with God, without this prayer line that we have, this direct communication with God, where would that where would that leave us? Let me put it to you this way. Has anybody ever given you the silent treatment? Has anybody ever done that to you? And it's just like, for whatever reason, it's like they rolled up, and a marriage note, well, back in the day, you used to have to roll your windows up, and they would roll the window up, and just pretend like there's this window here. And that they couldn't hear you, you couldn't hear them. Has anybody ever given you the silent treatment? Sometimes people give us the silent treatment, we don't even know they're doing it. Kind of like what it is. If we don't have this prayer life with God, it's like this silent treatment. Here you are, you're trying and trying your best to talk to somebody, and they're just pretending like they're not hearing you. My kids are excellent at playing this game. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Yes, you did. <laughs> Go clean your room, whatever that is. We did with Dad, too. That didn't work. Your kids do not have a hearing problem. They just didn't want to hear you. And sometimes I wonder if we're not the same way with God, that we have chose not to hear from Him. Because we already know going to tell us therefore you should pray like this our father in heaven your name be honored as holy your kingdom come your will be done in earth as it is in heaven he's given this praise and this glory and this honor to god and we should praise we should take this time to praise god and thank him for who he is and then he gets into the heart of this in the heart of it he gets out this need he said give us today our daily bread we have we have needs Every one of us here have got some needs. And I don't know what your needs are. But some of you, you need a stronger marriage. Some of you, you need forgiveness. Some of you need some financial peace and security in your life. Some of you need friendship. Some of you are struggling with a rough life at home. Some of you are struggling with cars or with work issues. We all have some sort of need. And that's what he does here. He starts to give out these needs to God. And it's not wrong to talk to God about your needs. We need, we need to do that because you have a need you have a need. Who better to go to than the one who created all the stuff around us anyway? The person that you're at odds with, God created them too. He created them. I remember talking to my sister whenever I found out that I uh, was expecting our first baby. And I was like, I don't, I don't know. Like, what, what do I do? Like, what do I do? And I remember talking to my dad and he was like, I don't know, son. You just... You just do it. Thanks, Dad. You gave me a Nike commercial. And, uh, <laughs> so my sister gave me this book, and it was called uh, How to Dad. And it was just talking about this introductory stuff. And uh, I thought, wow, this is like common sense. So like being a parent is like common sense. Okay, I, th I, think, I think I get it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my father card, and I'm going to use my dad card, and then, the manner of which intended. So it's like having tools. That's what I'm going to use. And then a part of that is you start teaching your kids how to use the tools. 
These are needs that we have. And I started doing the exact same thing with my kids. I see them out there beating a nail with a screwdriver. I'm like, uh, nope, you got a hammer. Go get the right one. No, but it's all the way over there. Yes, let's get up. Let's go get the right tool. And I'm doing the same, the same thing. I'm my dad. Made over. I love you, Dad. He's watching online. <laughs> Church, you have needs. Whatever those needs are, communicate them to God. He wants to hear from you. He knows what you need, but He wants to hear from you. He wants to hear from you. He doesn't just need to assume all the time. Give us, give us today our daily bread. And He also says, and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven others. He's not only praying for this idea of praying for themselves, but also praying for others. We should pray for other people. See, this is part of these needs because there's sometimes the people, they need a lot of prayer. Do you know who I'm talking about? You, I know you do. They need Jesus. And you're praying for them. God, please be with so-and-so. Be with me. But they really need you. And we're praying. For, they, we need to uplift these people to the Lord in prayer. We need to pray for ourselves, our needs. But we also need to pray for the needs of others because they need Jesus too. And then he goes on. And in kind of this last part of this, he says, And do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And I think this is probably my favorite part. Because what he does here is that he's praying not only for the future, but guidance, direction, and protection. Guidance, direction, and protection. He's praying for these things, for the future for decisions because sometimes there's going to come a point that something's going to hit you so hard and so fast that you don't have time to pray I remember in church growing up and this one old timey preacher he said you better have your praying caught up and I didn't really understood you know I just didn't really quite get what he meant but I think this is it is that we're praying for the future we're praying for the best decisions that we can try to be guided by him by the guidance of the Holy Spirit that he would lead us and guide us so that we can make wise decisions, so we can have the right friends. This is a part of this prayer life that we'd have. So we're praying in the kind of three different categories here. The, the introductory, we're giving God honor, we're giving God praise, we're laying out our needs for ourselves and the needs for others, and we're praying for the future here. But you see what you're praying for this future part of? And deliver us from the evil one? Church, your enemy is not your spouse. Your enemy is not your family, your neighbors. Your enemy is not your debt. Your enemy is not your work or your boss. Your enemy is Satan, the evil one. That is your enemy. He is the enemy. And what he's praying here is, hey, deliver us from this one. Help us make wise decisions. We not give in to this temptation. We need to pray for these things. But you see in this prayer, this prayer is just a short few sentences long. And some of us get hung up. We don't know what to pray. And some of you, maybe you've been somewhere, you've been asked to pray. Hey, will you, will you lead us in prayer? And you're like, I don't know what to say. Jesus gave us the example. We're going to praise God, list our need, pray for future. That's it. It's pretty simple, isn't it? Give God praise, establish our need, pray for the future. That's some of the most simplest terms when it comes to prayer that I think that I've ever heard. And God wants to hear from you. Now, this is what I would call just, a, I say, a regular prayer life. This is what we need in our life. And I'm not saying that every day at 4 o'clock you have to hit your knees and pray, but we need to have some kind of open communication with God. And if I were to ask you, have you ever prayed? We're all going to say, yes, I, I've prayed. I, I've prayed. And Jesus was here, and his conclusion to this prayer was this, for the future. For the future. And I kind of mentioned earlier that sometimes there's going to be something that's going to hit you so hard and so fast that you're not going to have time to pray. So here's where the part that I would love to have your undivided attention. Because I know if you go through life and you have needs, sometimes you get brought to your knees. Life hits you so hard, so fast, you didn't see it coming. It's like you just woke up one day and this humongous problem was right before you. 
I've heard of people go to the doctor and in just a few minutes their life changed like that if you're had a need so hard you've been hit so hard that you just don't know what to do maybe you've been praying but it almost feels like that they've not been answered maybe you're praying and you just feel like you're not getting anywhere I'm talking about have you ever been brought to your knees that you have such a need it's going to take more than just a few words to get it to God I'm talking about you've been brought down you've been broken you've been humbled have you got that point to where you feel like you've hit rock bottom whether it be disease or divorce or whatever issue I mean have you ever been there where your job was gone or you've been there and you just everything was fine one day and the next day your loved one was just gone and you just get rocked to your core have you ever been that shook that rocked and you go to pray and you don't even have the words to say Jesus addresses this in verse 16 and he calls this fasting and prayer and he says this in verse 16 whenever you fast don't be sad faced like hypocrites for they make their, their faces unattractive so their fasting is obvious to people I assure you, they've got the reward. So again, he's talking about this fasting and prayer. In church, fasting and prayer, what you need to understand is that it is very powerful. It is not to be used as a gimmick to show off. And what these other people were doing here, and he called them sad face like the hypocrites. They were showboating again when it comes to fasting. Because if you've ever seen anybody doing a fast or a prolonged fast, they're withholding nutrients to their body. And particularly their, their cheekbones, and it's going to... You can start seeing some facial impact in this here because they're withholding this nutrients from their body. Whether it be a three-day fast or a seven-day or some people do a 30-day fast. Jesus went 40 days, fasted 40 days. And he says, listen, whenever you do this fast, whenever you're, you're so broken, you're, you're so down and you have to hit your knees or you, you go through this fa a time of fasting and prayer, don't show both. Do your very best to cover it up. Do your very... Let's look what he says here. Verse 17, he says, But when you fast, put oil on your head, wash your face so that you don't show your face in the people, but to your Father, again, who is in secret. It's intimate. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. He says, But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face. He doesn't say oil up and take a bath. That's not what he means. But what he does mean is we're going to try to go as normal as possible. Don't make it obvious. Keep it private. Keep it quiet to yourself. Every time I do a fast, everybody and their mother ask me out to eat. Every time. In one, like, rarely anybody ever asked me to go out to eat with them. But this one time I was doing a fast, and I forget how many days it was. And I had four different people call me up and say, Hey, you want to go eat? Two of them was in the same day. Hey, you want to go grab lunch today? And I'm like, Ah, no, man, I'm good. We'll go do it another day. Great, what about tomorrow? Because I'm off all day tomorrow. No, let's wait till next week. And so anyway, I was trying to, trying to put, put that off. What was my wife? She never calls me and asks me to lunch. Never, ever. But she calls me up. She says, hey, I'm thinking Papa John's for lunch. We can meet you. I'm like, uh, Papa John's? It sounds great, but no, it's not. So anyway, and then I began to told her, hey, here's, here's the reason why. Didn't showboat, didn't tell it off to people. And that's what he's saying. Don't do this. But make it as make it as hidden as you possibly can. Make it as hidden as you possibly can. Put oil on your head and wash your face. Jesus doesn't go into a lot of detail about prayer and fasting. And so in Matthew chapter 17, he goes a little bit deeper. And this is what I'm going to leave you with. Matthew chapter 17, because the disciples had hit a point of frustration. They they couldn't find any success. Jesus had given them power and authority to cast out demons and to heal the sick. And they came across this one situation that they just couldn't do it. They just couldn't do it. And so Jesus begins to rebuke them. And this is Matthew chapter 17, verse 28. And here's what he says. The disciples came to him and said, Jesus, we, we can't do this. And here's what he said. Because of your little faith, he told them. For I assure you, if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you will tell this mountain move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not come out except by prayer and fasting. Church, 
A lot of times we don't know when to fast and pray. When are you to fast and pray? When, when is it that you need to take time in your life to fast and pray? Church, when you need to get close to God. Maybe when you feel separated. You've got a big decision to make. Maybe you're far from God. Maybe you're in a bind. Maybe you're facing opposition. Maybe there's trouble in your, in your family. Maybe there's on behalf of somebody else. And maybe cancer is coming to your family or, or some other disease. Or maybe there's some upcoming decisions you've got to make. You need to get as close to God as possible. You need an act of God. You need to pray down fire from heaven. You've got something so big that a regular prayer ain't going to do. You need to call down and get as close to God as you can and call down the fire from heaven. You need an act of God. You need a miracle in your life. Church, this is time to fast and pray. Fast and pray that we seek God through prayer and fashion. When we need such a movement of God, this is going to be an absolute miracle. Just such a movement of God. That we just need to get that much closer to God. And I'm church, I'm telling you, if you have never spent time fasting in prayer, that I encourage you at some time just to pray to God and say, hey, think about prayer and fasting whenever God wants you to. Because I've done it before. Say, hey, I think I'll fast for a few days. And I just did it. And I didn't feel any closer to God whatsoever. I just done it because I heard somebody else preach on it. I was like, ah, sounds like a good idea. I've never done it. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Three days went by and I didn't eat nothing. And nothing happened. Nothing happened. But... The reason why is because I went in it with the wrong attitude. I did it just expecting something and I didn't get any closer to God whatsoever. Church, we go to face and prayer. We have to be in the right mindset even to do it. Even to do it. This is what Jesus said about prayer when it comes to fasting and prayer. And he says, listen, it's about our faith. See, this kind, he's talking about what they were trying to cast out. He said, this kind can't come out except by prayer and fasting. This, this great movement, this unbelievable movement of God, but it's the faith behind the fast. That's what they missed, their little faith. Maybe you come across a time when you feel like that your faith is weak, when you feel like that you just can't go on, or you just the decision's too big, or the family's just struggling too much. When you need a movement of God, then I encourage you to, to consider prayer and fasting. Such a move of God. You just don't know what to do. You don't know what direction to head. You don't know what job to take. You don't know what to do with your family. This is what he does about teaching about prayer. Teaching about prayer. And I don't know, I ask you again how your, how your prayer life is. Because I think so many of us, we, we've got it and it's great. Yeah, I, I pray great. It's like having this sander and never ever using it. it it's great. It's great for having all these tools. They're great for the intention that they, they were meant to use. They're, they're great for that. But if we don't ever use them, then what's the use to have them? And I wonder how much of us will take prayer, we got it, and we'll stick it in our pocket. Yeah, it's great to call it up. But I think Jesus is wanting two things from us here this morning. He's wanting us to have an intimate relationship with Him. We should, we should have some sort of prayer life with Him time that we can just talk to God and pray no, ah, but I don't I don't have time you don't have time okay I I want to I want to read this again this is a again this will be out of King James but this is this is Matthew it's Matthew chapter 6 okay so right now it says it's 1133 our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Don't lead us on the temptation, but deliver us from evil. Find us the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It says it's 1134. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It's still 1134. This intimate time that we have with God, it's not that it's a great big amount of time. It's just that it's there. Church, here's what having kids and my wife 
have been married. This is what my family has taught me. It's not the amount of time that I necessarily spend with them. It's that quality of time that I spend with them. They just want me. We don't have to do anything big, extravagant. We don't have to do anything big. Uh, yesterday, my wife, she threw me a birthday party. and My kids gave these speeches in which they, they, they told stories about me. And last night, I was, I was reliving all this. Not one story the day, the day shared that had to do with stuff. They had to do with stuff. Do you have anything to do with the size of the TV or what? Nobody, none of my kids mentioned what kind of car that we drive. They didn't even mention the tractor. What they did mention was us going camping, me teaching Abney how to drive, spending time together. That's what they mentioned. Church, this is exactly what God has talked about in your prior life. It's not that it has to be some big extravagant show. It's just you taking a moment to talk with our Creator. That's it. That's it. So how does your prior life look? Do, maybe some of you need to start now taking time, making it a priority to talk to the Father. Just talk to Him. Talk to Him. Tell Him how great He is. Tell Him what your needs are. Man, and pray for the future. Because we need it. That's it. Some of you, some of you have got things that you just need to take to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord in prayer. There's a song there. Take it to the Lord in prayer. I'm not going to sing it to you because I'm terrible at singing, but there's an old song in a red hymnal book. It starts out, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. I think it's time that we take it to the Lord in prayer. The things that are heavy upon your hearts, we take it to the Lord in prayer. Whatever it is that's burdening you, whatever it is that you've got, yeah, Let's give God some awesome praise. Let's, let's praise Him for who He is and for what He's done. Praise Him. And then we're going to take time and we're going to share him, with Him our needs and the needs of others. And pray for our future. Some of you, you're at such a point in your life that you need, you need the fire from heaven. You need the power of God to come intervene in your family or in your marriage or in your work. You need to call down the power of God of God. And church, I encourage you to hit your knees fasting and prayer. Church, there's more done on our knees than will ever be done with our hands. Our knees. When we hit our knees in prayer. Now, I know that we don't always do it. Right now, we're going to open this part right here up to give you an opportunity to hit your knees before God. To hit your knees. Hit your knees and it may, it may be that you've got something. You just need to have this prayer life going on, this, this, this little communication, this intimacy with God. I encourage you to hit your knees. Some of you need such a move and an act of God that you need God to intervene. You need an intervention from God. You need God to do something so big and so mighty and so powerful and so great that somebody just goes, wow, what happened? What happened there? And it would be, the angel would be, his it's just like God moved. Just God moved. See, church, I think it's time that we get some prayers behind all of our social media posts, behind all of our prayer requests. And there's so many people that come to me and say, hey, would you pray about this? Would you pray about this? I'm like, yeah, I'd pray, but I wonder how many people are praying themselves. Like, I don't care at all to pray for you. And I'll pray for you. Anytime you ask, I'm going to pray for you. But I think that the Father ought to hear from you too. Like, I'm going to pray for myself and I'm going to pray for others. And that's in the model prayer. Pray for yourself and pray for others. I'm going to do that. But I think that you... Need to pray as well. You need to be praying for your needs because nobody knows your needs like you know your needs. Now, I don't know what needs you've got this morning. I don't know what kind of act of God that you need this morning. I think it's time that we take it to the Lord in prayer. Whatever that is. This is the model prayer. This is the model example that, that Jesus gave. Church, could you imagine what would happen if we hit our knees, I'm talking about us. If we regularly and often we hit our knees through prayer, could you imagine what would happen? I want you to answer this in your mind now. What, what happens when people pray? What happens when people pray? Things get done. Unbelievable happens. Miracles happen. People get cured. <laughs> we have friends that a miracle touched him because she went into labor 
very way prematurely and the doctors came back and thought we don't know what happened because her water broke and somehow it just sealed up and the doctors are going we got no clue we got no clue no clue she's at home right now resting we know what happened <laughs> we had a need we hit our knees in prayer god moved that's what happens when we pray but yet i don't understand why we're hitting nails with a screwdriver when we can get the right tool and pray and watch God do something great. You need a move of God in your life. It's time to hit your knees in prayer. You've got all these great tools at your disposal. Jesus is saying, prayer is one of the greatest weapons we got. Why don't you use it? We need to use it. Use it. Don't leave it all up to me, church. I'm your pastor. I'm your friend. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for you. But nobody can pray for you like you pray for you. Nobody can pray for your family like you pray for your kids. Nobody can. Nobody can pray for your spouse like you pray for your spouse. Church, it's time that we pray. Now, I don't know what needs you've got going on in your life. I don't know what move of God you need in your life. But we've got these tools at our disposal and He calls it prayer. And it's time that we hit our knees and we pray. You're burned about something? I read this morning about New Zealand. Some buddy went in and shot people up. The world needs prayer. Prayer. We need prayer. Now, I don't know what it is that's going on in your life right now. But I think it's time that we hit our knees. He started out, whenever he said this, he started out by saying, listen, instead of praying all publicly like that, I want you to do it privately. We're going to try to make this as privately as we possibly can. Fish, go ahead and kill these lights. We're going to make this as private as we possibly can. Now I'm going to ask you if you would, go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes. And some of you, you already know that you need to come up to this altar and pray. You're burdened this morning. You need to come to this altar and pray. Our youth pastor is going to come up. You want somebody to pray with you? Our youth pastor is going to be right here. He's going to pray with you. Some of you, you just need to have a conversation with God. And I'm going to ask you if you would, right here at this altar, that you come and you hit your knees. And that you would call out to God to do something great. That you would call out on God to do something mighty. Right now, you're going to need a move of God. You need an act of God. You need God to do something in your family's life. I'm asking if you would to come and let's pray. Right now. you got such a move. You need such an act. He, he, it is so simple. He said, listen, there's only three things. We're going to take time. We're going to give God some honor. We're going to give Him some praise. We're going to list out our needs. We're going to list out our needs, and then we're going to praise for some future. Church, you've got something going on in your life. You need God to move. Yes, you can pray right there in your seat. I think, I think that God will honor that. But I think some of you are here today, and you are so moved. You are so touched. You need such a move of God right now that I encourage you, if you would, to come. Maybe your entire family, come. Your marriage, come. Bring it to the altar. Your need, your family, your disease, your sickness, come. Come, whatever that may be. Come, there's just people coming. And I'm going to encourage you right now, if you would, to, just, just to come. He didn't say any specific manner, any other way, just that, that we would come. You don't know the right words to say, church, I'm telling you, just, just come. Open your mouth and share with Him your praise. Share with Him your need. Share with Him your burden. Share with Him. And as you share, thank Him for the future. Thank Him for already what He's doing. Church, there's people that's coming. I'm encouraging you right now if you need to come. Whatever that need is, that you would come and you place it before the altar. And that we give it to God. Whatever that need is. You need to pray for healing. You need to pray for your family. You need to pray for sickness. You need to pray for your marriage. You need to pray for your work. Whatever that may be. You need to come and pray. Is it time to take it to the Lord in prayer? That in Matthew chapter 17, he said, because of your little faith, it's what he told them at church. We're right now, we're saying by we're us coming, we're saying, hey, we believe that God is going to move. We're already got the faith that God is already acting. He's already acting in your favor and on your behalf. All he wants to do is hear from you. All he wants to do is to hear from you. And if that's you today, and I encourage you to call out to God. 
an almighty God who is great, who is mighty, who is true, who is still saving lives today, who is still doing miracles today, who is still with a faith of the size of a mustard seed. With that much faith, mountains are being torn down. <laughs> mountains are being cast into the sea. The impossible becomes possible. The impossible becomes possible when we call out to God in prayer. Some of you are here today and maybe you feel like that you you don't feel like you need to come to the altar and pray. And that's fine right now where you sit. Will you call it on God right now? Right now where you sit. How's your prayer life going with God? How's it going with God? Right now, I encourage you right now to call out on our Father. Praise Him. Tell Him your needs. Maybe the need of yourself. Maybe the need of someone else. Tell Him your needs. Oh, let's pray for you. Let's pray for you. And as we do this, you watch God do something so great, so mighty, and so true that I'm telling you, He's not done yet. God is still, God is still rolling stones away. God is still healing people. God is still saving those who seem so far from sin. God is still saving people and healing marriages and restoring the dead to life in the hospitals every day. God is still performing miracles through doctors and through nurses. God is still delivering babies. There are still miracles being born every day. All he's asking and seeking is that we would call out him in prayer. Church, if you need to get close to God today, you need a great act of faith. You're in a bind. You need an act of God. You have a decision to make, and I encourage you, church, right now, wherever you're at, to call out on our Father in prayer. Whatever that is. Maybe some of you here today and you've got something going on in your life. You need somebody else to pray for you. May I be that person to pray for you, whatever that is. Would you just raise your hand and say, hey, Pastor, would you, would you pray for me? Would you pray for me? Those hands are going up. Thank you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Yes, I want to pray for you. Thank you. Father, we begin with you. By our model prayer, God, we thank you, Father, for who you are and what you've done, what you're going to do. God, we just thank you so much. We praise your holy name that why you are there that you cared so much about us that you'd even create us how do you care that much thank you father for loving us and for caring about us god i pray right now for these needs there's needs and you saw these hands that go up father in there there's needs in the life there's marriages that need to be touched there's families that need to be healed there's disease that needs to be removed we pray father that you would touch each and every one of these families and help them father to seek you, your wisdom. And through prayer, maybe through fasting, that we can seek and get a closer walk with you. A closer walk with you. Church, this morning, I'm so moved and so burdened. Maybe you've got somebody in your family that needs Jesus. Do you have somebody in your family that is lost that needs Jesus? I'm going to ask you to raise your hand up and keep it up because we're going to pray for that person. you got somebody in your family that needs Jesus? Yeah, you keep a hand up. We're going to pray for them. We're going to pray that God to move. you got somebody in your family that needs Jesus? I'm just going to ask you just to hold your hand up representing that person. Represent that person. We're going to pray for them. Pray for them. I got somebody in my family I want to see saved. We're going to pray for them. All right, let's pray together right now. God, we pray that these lives right now, they need Jesus. We're uplifting our hands, Father, because they need Jesus to save them. They are lost and undone without sin. They need Jesus. And right now, God, we uplift them to you and pray, God, that a miracle be done in their life, that you would touch their heart and let them see a need. For a Savior. Let them see the sin they have in their life. That they may come to know you in a free pardon of sin. That they can come to know you the way we know you. Through Jesus and His blood. That's the way we know. And we pray, God, and uplift these people to you, Father, that they would know you in that same manner. And they'd be saved from their sins. We uplift their names. Would you give their name to God right now? Whatever it is, give it their names. We give these names to you. Whatever name that is. God, that they would be saved. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Would you take a moment to give God some awesome praise? God, we love you.